Let's take a quick look back to the summer of 2020. We first, though, want to get to those new headlines this morning. Coronavirus cases. Elements in the coronavirus emergency. No, 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 not, not that. This. I prime the top of the two-player pinball machine. The ice side is white and the fire side is gray. Then it sat like this for what, three years. Oh my God, it's time to finish this project so we can get to playing. Painting the entire thing by hand would take a while, so I opted to do a mix with spray painting and hand painting. I started with some base coats and added layers of detail that transformed this side into just a really cool looking face. Without any wording, only detail the art, it clearly shows that it's fire versus ice. Similar styles went on the player ends of the machine. I taped up the plunger knobs. I think I prefer not to paint anything that moves or that players will interact with. That could change later, but we'll stick with that for now. Now for the play surface. Even though I primed this three years ago, it helped a lot now because I don't want to have to glop paint where pinballs will roll. It should be smooth as can be. I started by spray painting the bulk of it with blue and red, then going in to clean up the overspray edges and adding theming details. The playfield looks great, but needs some rubber bumpers to make it complete. First up are those odd shaped triangles near the flippers. I used a piece of paper to transfer a template to a scrap piece of wood. Here's where I'll figure out the spacing of the three posts that will hold it in place. When I ordered the posts years ago, I got them with shorter tail ends, so to compensate, I have to use a Forstner bit to gouge out enough material to get a washer and nut on the threads. Obviously, the first one went in the corner with enough clearance for the marble and rubber band. Then I placed one nearest the imaginary flipper, spacing it about half of what I'd like the rubber band tension to be at. Next, I stretched the rubber band and marked the third post spot. Too much tension and the post will bend over time too little and the pinballs won't bounce off enough. This spacing felt good, so after taking the posts out, I used a piece of paper to mark the hole locations. This will act as the template for the play surface. A normal pinball machine has a bunch of obstacles and thingamabobbers all over the play table. With that, you're playing against the machine, or really playing against yourself. With this, the goal is to send pinballs to the other side as often as possible. More crossing equals more exciting. I place the post bumpers in locations that don't block the pinballs from crossing. They're mostly in places that protect some of the corners from getting dented. There are so many tunnels and obstacles hidden below the surface, but somehow, all the places I wanted to put a post were accessible. This is it. The machine is officially done and ready for games. Here's what I was thinking as far as rules go. Let me know if you think I should make any changes or not. Each person will start with five balls that they can release on their own time. The round ends when all 10 balls are scored. First to win three rounds wins the match. There can be ties, so a game could have quite a few rounds. Let me know your thoughts. Now I just need some friends to play with. Don't worry, I'll find some, hopefully. Okay, that's it for now. See ya. No snacks for Koji, just for Otto. Right?
auto. Yeah, just for auto. None for Koji. Then for Koji, just just for Otto. Can you hear that? Chunker boy? Hey. No Koji. No Koji.